6.1.1 state the Doppler effect in words. Well, I'm just going to leave that one to you and go straight to 6.1.2. A physics learner clock radio awakens her with a steady and irritating sound of frequency 600 hertz. One morning, it malfunctions and cannot be turned off. In frustration, the learner drops the clock radio out of a fourth-story dorm window. 15 meters from the ground. Assume that the speed of the sound is 343 meters per second. Ignore the effects of air resistance. Calculate the frequency that the learner hears just before the clock radio strikes the ground. So the frequency observed by the learner will be equals to V plus or minus VL divided by V plus or minus VS multiplied by the frequency of the source frequency of source we have 600 so there is no problem there whatsoever and then v the speed of sound in air it is given to us 343 meters per second the velocity of the listener the listener is stationary the listener is in her room so we have that it is equals to zero I think what we need is the velocity of the source. We want the velocity of the clock before or just as it strikes the ground. Let's gather our information and see which equation we need to use. We have the displacement, which is 15 meters. We have our acceleration, obviously, 9.8. We have VI, which is equal to zero because the learner dropped the clock and what else do we have i think that is all we need we are looking for vf so the simplest formula here to use should be vf squared is equals to vi squared plus 2a delta y so vf squared will be equals to vi that is zero so we have zero squared plus two multiplied by the acceleration let's take up as positive so our acceleration will be minus 9.8 and delta y will be minus 15. And if we take square roots on both sides, we're going to get VF being equals to 17.15 meters per second. And just like that, we have the velocity of the sound source. So we can go ahead and substitute now. FL is equal to 343 plus or minus 0 divided by 3, 4, 3, plus the velocity of the source. The source is moving away, so we're supposed to have a plus sign on the denominator. So plus 17.15. Everything multiplied by the velocity of the source, which is 600 hertz. If you put that in your calculator, you should get 571. 0.43 hertz. You need to be comfortable with doing this on Doppler effect because it is a very common trend that I'm seeing. We have to calculate VS or VL these days, some way, somehow, before we substitute into FL. It is a new trend that I'm starting to see. So let's let's be vigilant. Let's go ahead and find more problems that involve these kind of situations and familiarize ourselves uh, with such. 6.1.3, explain the change in frequency observed by the listener with reference to the speed of the radio clock. So as the clock is going down, obviously, under the influence of gravity, then the velocity of the source is increasing. We know fully well that the frequency observed by the listener is equals to V divided by V plus Vs multiplied by the frequency of the source. So if Vs is increasing, then FL should be decreasing. The frequency observed by the listener should be less than that emitted by the sound source. 6.2, a helium line from the spectrum of the sun has a frequency of 6.2 times 10 to the power of 14 hertz. The frequencies of the same helium line from the Earth, which are observed in the line emission spectrum of two stars, are for star X, we have 6.24 times 10 to 
times 10 to the 14 hertz and for star y we have 6.04 times 10 to the power 14 hertz yeah this is an interesting one because instead of having the wavelength we are given the frequencies of distant stars usually it is wavelength so it is quite you know an interesting question 6.2.1 which one of the stars x or y has a redshift so the one with a smaller frequency has a redshift because it has a higher wavelength so that is star y and 6.2.2 in which direction away from the earth or towards the earth does star x move star x has a higher frequency then our reference point 6.2 times 10 to the power 14 hertz so it should be moving towards the earth 